Hi all, uh, welcome to today's webinar. Uh, today we'll be covering um, sort of some new features on the Prima Go uh, website. Uh, for those of you who don't recognise me, uh, my name is Mike and we do have Ollie on the wild chat today so if you have any questions don't hesitate to give him a, give him a shout, uh, he'll be there for, for, for the, the entirety of today's session. Um, and again we will be here after the session if you have any questions. Um, so what we're going to be covering is just some new uh, some new changes to the the, the web store and, and what's going to be going into into the, the web store hopefully in the, the next next few releases. Um, one first apparent change when you, you do go to, to the web store is sort of the, the look and the feel. Um, our, our developers have been working hard to make it easier to use the web store um, just by making sort of buttons uh, and everything like that clear. So. Uh, you know, you've got sort of some some new new buttons on there that that are different colours. Uh, when you go to add some new things, there's the, there's a new glow around the uh, images and modules to make it a little bit easier to recognise what you've done. So one of them things is if we go to content, then page layout. If you go to a a page and page modules, when you do add a module, you get sort of this green glow around the module to so so you know that you know this is the module you just added so you know what to to to, to play around with and what to, to edit rather than editing something that's already on your web store. Um you know that this is the same in image collections, other things like that in, in, in modules. So uh, I think it's a really useful thing so uh, so people aren't getting confused. Um another thing that's been quite recently put in is if we go back to the dashboard, uh, right down the very bottom we have this top 10 search elements um, so this information was already within the, the web store under the, the tag cloud module um, but it wasn't as, as easy to see as, as it is now um, so the tag cloud module has been removed and this sort of top 10 search elements has been put in its place with the information used there um, so it gives you a, a good overview of what your customers have been searching for um, you know, you could say, oh well, we've had a hundred searches of paper, but we've only had sort of ten orders that have actually had paper coming through. You know, that can can help you raise questions to sort of why because uh, you're not getting the orders through for paper. Is it too hard for your customers to find the the paper that they want? So it can, you know, you, fr from this information, you can run certain sort of marketing campaigns, uh, promote certain items on a web store if you feel that they they're being searched for, but you're not getting them searched into conversions and actually ordered orders. Um, so it's just useful information that, that sort of ha hasn't been there before, uh, but you know you can easily access it from the dashboard. Uh, now the next thing that we're going to be going on to is probably something that's been requested quite a lot, and it will be sort of improved, and there will be more things added to it. And it's this live edit button. Um, so you can just click that, and it opens up this admin view. So what this enables you to do is actually to, to see the modules that you've got in your web store and make changes to where they are on your web store. So rather than you having to, to look at the list of the, the modules in your page and having to visualise, well, oh, that banner's third in the list, but you, you're not entirely sure whether it looked better right at the top or right at the bottom. With this, uh, this, this live edit, you can click the edit button, say, oh, well, I'd rather have the fine cartridge on the right. Click the right button your web store refresh and you've got the fine cartridges over there so that works for moving modules around so to the left to the top to the bottom and moving them up and down in ordering um, so it is something that's relatively new to the system so it will be improving so you will hopefully in the future have the uh, ability to to remove modules from the web store uh, and things like that so it's just something that will make it easy for you, you to, to to keep on top of your web store and make sure that the content that you've got on there is, is up to date and, and, and new uh, one other key feature with this live edit is the use of uh, selecting images for your categories. So, uh, you know, we we do get a fair amount of calls uh, about this. Uh, so, calls. Oh well, on my on my categories, there's no images. Uh, why is there no image? And with sort of this um, this live edit, you can go into any category as long as you you've got the live uh, live edit enabled. And you can easily select the image for the category. So say, oh well, you know we're on uh, adhesives here. Uh, imagine there's no image at the front. We can click the adhesive button, and then if we go back to the stationery, 
you can see there that's been updated with the image for that code. So you can do that with sort of all the the, the different categories. So you can spend you know, a couple of minutes looking for, for the categories that don't have an image and update them, and it'll uh, give you your web store that that better look. Okay. Uh, once you've completely finished with the the live edit, it's just a simple case of there you go, log out, and you're back to your normal web store. Okay. Now we do get quite a few calls. Um, from from our customers, and I'm sure that, that our customers get a, a number of calls from their customers as well. Oh, I can't find product X on the web store, and you know you can be sat there for a while thinking, oh, why is it not showing? Uh, and all the reasons to to why it should be showing are, are there. Um, we've made it easy for you to to find out a reason to why it won't be showing, and that's through the the product product problem checker. Uh, to get to this, you go to help, and then this product problem check here. Uh, and what this is, it just states the reasons why a product wouldn't be showing and then if the product is or isn't showing. Um, you can select a, a company and a user, so if you've got one specific user that can't see a product, it'll, get, it'll uh, inform you to reasons why that product won't be showing. So you can select the company from the list, and then once you select the company, you can select the user within that company. If you just do a search, it'll do a search based on the web store control company. So if we just search for KF24.01, there you go. It'll uh, it'll push back the results to say why or why not this this uh, this item um, will be on there. So at the moment, you see this item code has been found. If this item code hasn't been found, it'll state reasons. So it might be that yeah, the 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 stock product hasn't been set to be available on, on web for all the companies. It could be the web store control company doesn't have the items catalog in it. Um, it's just something that, that can give you a, a quick overview um, of, of why the product could be showing and instead of you spending sort of five or ten minutes on the phone to us while we, we investigate you could get back to your customer and say there you go it's back on the web now you can order it so it, it just enables you to get back to your customer a lot quicker than than usual um, one other other thing that we, we have had quite a few calls about is sort of the, the process that it goes through for uh, your authorizer email, so how you, you get them set up for uh, someone who places pending orders only and how they can get their orders authorized um, and, and who actually gets the, the pending order email. So um, this this order authorizer checker has been put in. And what it searches for is all companies that at least ha have at least one contact that is set to place pending orders only. And it just gives you a bit of a flow chart to, to who should be receiving the email and who should be authorising their order. So if you've got quite a big company with a few different branches, a few different uh, child companies, then you can use this to see who will be getting the, uh, the authorised email and, and how that sort of flow works. So it's, it's pretty sim similar to the product problem checker. You can select the company, so we'll select Athlon Town, select the user and find out who will be getting their um, their authorized uh, their pending order emails? So it just gives you a, a bit of a, a knowledge to to what email address will be um, will, will be receiving this. So this user placed the pending orders only, and at the bottom we can see here that they've got uh, Ollie as a, as an authorizer. Um, so if you've got quite a big setup, it'll give you the reasons why sort of they won't receive it. Um, and then at the very bottom it will return who will be receiving their emails if there is someone in there. Um, so it just gives you a good overview of uh, how you can you can, can get that set up. Um, the next thing is something that is not very new to, to the web store but it's, it has been there for, for a third time it's just it's not really been been used that often and uh, that is the log to child. So if we go back into Prima and go to any company and go to sort of one web web, uh, web enabled contact, and within the the web access tab, you've got this log to child button. Um, so what this enables you to to, to do is to set up um, one admin, or, or any any admins, and for any child accounts that they do have, they are able to log into the child's uh, account and easily sort of look at their orders. It, they take over their account with the user access level so they can see the orders that they've had, place orders as that user. Um, so it just gives them a, a good a good way to, to manage 
all the, the different companies that, that they're sort of the, the parents of. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's very useful. And once you've, you, you've ticked this log to child, you want to go back to your web store. And uh, if we just log in. So to find this log to child and, and, and how you can tell your users to use this, do you want to go to the My Account section? And then right at the very bottom, you've got this child account. So it allows your users to replicate their other sort of child users and uh, and give them a, a good a good overview of, of how to how they're they're using their accounts. So with a simple click, I've logged into to the child account. And I can see any orders that the the child's placed. I can uh, place orders with this child. Um, it just allows your your customers easy easy access to the the child accounts. Um, I think that's something that that you know it, it will be be used once it's been made a, made aware of to yourselves. Um, the next thing that we'll be going into, but well hopefully we'll be going into uh, the the web store in the next couple of releases, is the email template. So this isn't actually in uh, the web store just yet. It's still being worked on by our development team. Um, but what the email te uh, templates are um, just enables you to 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 have a play around with and, and personalize your your emails so they are your, your own because at the moment they're, they're pretty standard so just enables you to to give a give a personal touch to the emails and and whatnot so when that's out uh, i'm sure we'll we'll be covering that um in a, in a webinar or or any training sessions if, if, you, if that's something that you're interested in um the last thing that we'll be, uh, we'll be going through is something that's been sort of noted quite recently um due to to some changes that google have made um, and that is that uh, some of our web stores are coming up as, as not secure um, uh, and that's due to, to not having an SSL certificate. Um, now it, this isn't something that we've changed, this has come from, from Google themselves. Um, we, we do have uh, a, a way of, of securing your web store um, and that is with uh, an SSL certificate. Um, at the moment it the, the way that the, the Google have made the changes, it doesn't look like your web stores uh, secure. So, with the use of an SSL certificate, uh, you can sort of get your web store looking more secure to your, your customers um, when they're, they're placing orders. Um, if you are interested in getting an SSL certificate, then uh, you know don't hesitate to, to contact our support department, and we'll uh, we're more than happy to discuss the, the pricing involved in in getting uh, an SSL certificate on your your web store. Um, uh, and that's all that, that we, we have for today. We've covered uh, some, some good features that I hope, hope we will be seeing on our, our customers' web stores uh, soon. Um, we will be sticking around for a little while uh, to answer any questions that you do have. Um, so, so if you want to drop all your messages, then, then you can. Um, if you're interested in any one-to-one -one training, anything like that, or any group training on the, the web store, then you know, don't hesitate to contact us. We're more than happy to, to, to give you that training, uh, and we'll organise and and get that that scheduled in. Um, you know, well, thanks for your time today, and we'll uh, we'll be seeing you next week. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe for, for future content. Uh, thanks for your time.